Spring Data JPA provides higher level abstraction on top of JPA and simplifies performing CRUD operations and pagination and things like that. If you take a look at how we can use Spring Data JPA, here we have, let's say we have JPA entity called post and then I can simply write a repository interface by extending JPA repository. And with this uh, just extending from JPA repository, I get all the features of performing CRUD operations. Let's take a look at how we can use uh, repository here. I can call uh, post repository dot find all to get all the uh, post entities. Or if I want to load just a page of uh, post entities, I can use this pageable object and then uh, pass it to find all and load only a subset of the uh, post entities. And also if I want to just load one entity, I can use find by ID or I can save or update using dot save. I can delete one entity by passing the primary key. So all these basic CRUD operations are automatically uh, provided by you by simply extending this uh, JPA repository. In addition to this, there is also a feature called derived query methods. So let's understand what is a derived query method first. So here I have another entity called user. So this is a user entity and I have properties like ID, email, password, name, role, disabled, etc, etc. Et now I also have a repository for user and I am extending it from JPA repository. Now let's take a use case of I want to get a user for the given email. So usually uh, if you are using plain JPA, you use uh, entity manager and then write JPQL query and then you can load a user for the given email. But using Spring Data JPA, you can simply write a method in this interface following certain naming convention and Spring Data JPA is going to figure it out how to load the entity, uh, user entity for the given email. So I am going to write a method optional of uh, user and it is by email okay so here we are following a specific naming pattern here so first we are going to use this common convention of uh, starting with find by and then you can express your where class as a uh, method name part of the method name itself so now what spring data jpa will do it is going to remove this find by part and try to create a where class by using this naming convention here. So here we just have email and it is going to generate a where class where uh, email equals to whatever the value we are passing here. So here I am using IntelliJ IDEA and I am not even running the application here. I can use this JPA console feature. I can, uh, I have connected my ID database tools with the uh, Postgres database and here I can see users there are a couple of users here and i can right away test this method here if i go to user repository i can invoke the method and here this method has an input so it is asking for me to provide email so i'm going to provide siva at uh, gmail.com okay so if i execute this here you can see it is automatically preparing a where class based on the method naming pattern that I am following. So one another thing you can notice again if I try to execute this here you can see let's say I am passing some um, capitals SIBA and if I execute it it is not going to return any result uh, because it is case sensitive. So again I can follow the naming pattern where I can specify email ignore case okay and if i execute this and here i can pass in any case and it is going to execute it is going to convert this here you can see it is automatically converting into uppercase and then comparing it so just by following certain naming convention it just did the trick and then it returned the uh, whatever the result I am expecting for. Okay, this is fine, very cool. But often this feature is kind of a being abused, like uh, just because you can use some method naming and then uh, you can invoke some operations doesn't mean you should do it in all the cases. For example, let's take a use case of user login. So basically user is going to provide their credentials, email and password and we need to fetch a user matching with those credentials. So it is going to start like something like this. 
okay let us use the same method and then not only email i also want to match the password as well okay here you can see intellij is providing the auto completion and i need to provide the password as well okay so now this looks a little lengthy but it does the job here it is going to check with email ignoring the case and then it also trying to match the password but if you take a look at our user entity we also have uh, fields like uh, disabled and locked so basically when login i want to it uh, match with the user who is not disabled and not locked okay so again we can do that by adding and uh, disabled is false okay and locked is false okay so here technically this is a valid one now let us even invoke that and see so here i can provide uh, your at gmail.com and password is secret okay so now if i execute it here you can see it automatically generated and disabled equals to false locked equal to false in addition to comparing with password and email okay so by just following this naming convention i'm able to get the job done uh, the use case is login and this can get things done but look at this method name it is ugly and uh, it is ridiculous and we shouldn't be doing this just because we can so logically this is a login operation so instead what i would recommend is to follow giving a meaningful name and then use jpql and write whatever the query you want to run so just looking at this method one should understand what you are trying to do i mean you can spend few minutes and then try to understand why to make it complicated why not simply follow some decent naming convention and do the right thing right so now i want to convert this into this i just want to give meaningful name with the, uh, whatever the query i want to execute but you can do it manually or you can use uh, intellij idea with J, uh, jpa buddy plugin and makes it very easy here you can say when you install jpa buddy plugin you get this uh, quick fixes where you can say extract jpkl query and configure when you click on it it is asking you to give some other name like uh, here i want to give login and then use named parameters okay so here it took that existing uh, long method name and then it understand what is the jpkl uh, it is supposed to generate and then change the login uh, method name to login and also generate the query so here this is all i wanted to do right so with jpi buddy it is as simple as that you don't have to uh, write all this query even i would say you can start with this uh, convenience of uh, generating uh, the method by following this pattern of uh, your id is going to provide this all features whatever the keywords that you can see you can use and you can form that query and then use jpa body plugins this feature where you can just click on option enter and then it will provide this uh, extract jpkl query and configure okay so this is what we can easily understand uh, earlier we have seen that long method name that is not a recommended practice and you should be writing some meaningful uh, method names with jpql instead i hope you like this tip and i would recommend you to take a look at jpa buddy for more such features mm -hmm.